Back on this slide, the one last thing I want to point out on here is, is sizing. I'm not spending a lot of time on sizes right now. I've got some resources listed on your rain garden handout that will really help you figure that out. But typically, um, typically, <laughs> the, well the books say anywhere from like 10 to 30 percent. So if you've got, um, if this is 100 percent, for example, of what, what you're collecting the, rain gar the water from, your rain garden should be anywhere from 10 percent to 30 percent of that. That's a big variety. And a lot of times, typically, we say about 10% is, is, is the minimum. And what we're trying to do is not necessarily capture all the water, but we're trying to capture, you know, for um, uh, the first flash, the first flush of water, which carries a lot of the pollutants a lot of times, as well as reduce the volume um, that's flowing across the land and into the lakes and rivers. You need to have considerations um, of what your setbacks would be. For example, if you have a foundation of a slab, uh, typically we say five feet. Your rain garden should be closer than five feet. And again, you know, you don't want to be creating um, like a wet foundation or a mold situation in a garage or a home. Uh, if you have a basement, it should be ten feet. And again, that's because, like, let's say this house has a basement. You don't want that water backing up into that basement where you'd be creating a bigger headache and a bigger situation for yourself. You also need to consider wells and septics. And um, wells you should have your rain garden located 50 feet away from and septics uh, 35 feet away from. Particularly septics, you don't want to be interfering with the absorption and the drainage of that. One, I've been asked this question recently. Can I put a rain garden over my drain field? And the answer is no. Um, that's not a good location for a, a rain garden. And lastly, it's, you know, go for one, call, call before you dig. Um, <laughs> hopefully everybody's doing that. And uh, you want to make sure that you're not hitting utility lines or any kind of things that could either be a safety issue or um, breaking a line that's going to cost you money for repair. <clears throat> so I'm going to go through uh, a kind of start to finish rain garden here and show you the reason I like this set of slides is because it's showing you how this rain garden is going to tie in with the existing landscape. <coughs> so first of all, just pointing out again here that the, the downspout area and in this situation, um, they figured they had about 300 gallons of water in a one inch rainfall. So from this downspout, 300 <coughs> gallons of water. If you were collecting water in rain barrels, that would be about six rain barrels full, each rain barrel being about 50 gallons. That's quite a bit of water in a one inch rain. And it's not a huge roofing area either. Um, Typically now in the, in the before pictures, it would flow across the soil, across the lawn, into a street um, storm drain. <clears throat> so the site was drawn out. So this is the existing vegetation that's already along that uh, building. And this is going to be the addition right here. Kind of a C-shaped addition or a moon-shaped addition. Wow, <laughs> is that Batman? <laughs> this, uh, the yellow area here is showing where, um, is showing where the berm, oops, sorry about that. I messed up here. The blue area here, this is the bottom of the rain garden. And the one thing I want to point out here is that you want to have a flat area in your rain garden. And that's typically this part. This is where you're going to plant um, a lot of the, vegetation that's going to help absorb that water in. If you, you had, pardon me? Did you have an overflow? Y yes. You would have an overflow. <clears throat> um, I can show you that in a minute, I think, where this one is. But anyway, so this is a flat area here. And um, so if you had one end deeper than the other, you're going to have the water kind of puddling up at that deep end where this end, for example, of the rain garden would be dry and this area would be wet. 
and that could affect the plant materials. So you really basically want to have, when you're looking at this section here, you're looking at one kind of bed almost of types of plant materials and what, how you're going to treat this. And typically in this area, um, you're going to add mulch and plants. Then the berm area, the yellow area, and this is the area that's going to, as the water comes in, it's going to fill up this rain garden and hit this berm so it's not all going to um, flow up across the lawn. <clears throat> and then the last area is, this is the area where the water, this, this light green area, is where the water is going to come in and um, be absorbed into the rain, brought into the rain garden. And I think the overflow is shown in one of the other slides, but the overflow basically, I'll just tell you, is that it is flowing back. At, if this were to fill up, the overflow would be right in here. I can't remember, if I took that slide out, I can't remember. But it would be right in this area where the, that water then would be diverted back into the storm sewer going across the lawn and into the street and then the storm sewer system in that case. There is not, sometimes you'll see um, structures built in that um, will actually tie into the sewer system and those work as well. So in this case it was nothing fancy. So this is just showing marking the rain garden, digging the hole for the bottom. Oops. There's what? Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, it was in there, so it's still going to be across the lawn. This is add the compost, showing we've got some nice dark compost we're going to add. <clears throat> and so there we are, filling the bottom with the leaf compost and mixing it in with the sand or the existing soil. <coughs> this is the berm, so when we removed soil here, we built up this berm here. And now we're going to cover this. This could be seeded underneath um, with grass seed. Um, of native grasses and sedges and things, um, or even flowers. Um, and it can be covered up with erosion control fabric, and this is an example of that. And, and the erosion control fabric is sold at some um, native landscaping uh, companies, and they're just staking it in there. And then this is the type of mulch. When we use mulch in our rain garden, we don't want anything fancy, no fancy wood chips or anything like that. We basically want some mulch. The reason we like this is because it's so roughly um, cut that it kind of sticks together and will form a mat and will adhere and it won't be floating all on one end of your rain garden as likely as if you were to use like bark chips or something like that. So it's your cheap mulch, nothing, it doesn't need to be dyed or sprayed or anything like that. Adding plants and it's showing here we've got some um, potted plants as well as what we call plugs and native plants come like plugs as well as these. Um, so these are kind of like how petunias come in four packs. And a, and a four pack of native plants costs about seven and a half dollars usually, somewhere around that.